It's the culmination of the summer season, the American Select Lacrosse Championships, right here live on LAX Sports Network. Hello, everybody. I am Tom Eschen alongside Tracy Wiener, one of the tournament directors for American Select. And Tracy, we start the day off here in the class of 2025. We've got four matchups for you, four championships. These players selected from 17 regions around the country, all competing against each other, region by region. And we've got a good one here in the class of 2025 to start. Team Maryland against Team Long Island Black. Really, the, the epitome of this tournament should be a good matchup here in the final. Isn't that what everybody expects, Long Island versus Maryland anyway? I mean, <laughs> right. we, we, we talk about it all year, every year. Um, all kidding aside, though, this is, is such a, a great experience for everybody. These games are going to be great. Long Island obviously won't be in all of them. So it, 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 you can see the parity in what's going on. This particular game is Long Island, Maryland. But as we move forward, you're going to see the other regions because I was there the last 48 hours watching these girls. And I'll tell you what, the parity across this country is is real. I mean, the teams from Colorado and, you know, just out West, they were killing it. And, and Florida had, had great games. I mean, everybody was just on point and ready and raring to go. I can't wait to do these games. Both of these teams only won by one goal again, which shows you even to get to the championship games, it's no longer, you know, a free, a free ride. No, absolutely not. It's going to be a great matchup for sure. There's 30-plus college coaches here to watch these athletes compete, and we can't wait to get it to you live here from Milford, Delaware. Opening draw coming up next. Live at DE Turf Sports Complex, it's the American Select Lacrosse Championships live here on LAX Sports Network. The goalie for Team Long Island Black today is Brianna Henke from Rocky Point and Team Elevate. And as we scroll across the field for Team Maryland, it'll be Annika Devos in there, number 66 from Hereford Technical High School in Maryland as well. As this game begins, it's two 25-minute running halves. We'll have a 10-minute halftime. The clock will stop at two under minutes under each half unless there's a 10-goal differential. So as we get going here, Tracy, the culmination of a few days of play, competitive games at that. Long Island Black and Team Maryland, the class of 2025, starting things off. To be excited, their parents are pumped. This is why they came to the event. And, you know, obviously from Long Island, I'm proud to see the team here. Should be a great game, although Long Island needs to play a little better than they did the first time that they met. They met earlier this tournament, right, Tracy? They said that was the very first game both these teams played. Yes, and, and Maryland won that game 14-6. to six. So let's see what adjustments mm. Coach Maloney can make. You know, Matt Maloney's one of the good ones. Bayport Blue Point was at Mattituck, won a couple of state titles out there. So I'm sure he's got some tricks up his sleeve. Yeah, both these teams winning their semifinal matchup not too long ago. Earlier this morning, they started 8 a.m. Eastern time. Long Island Black beating Massachusetts 20-25. 6-5 was that win, and then the Maryland team beating New Jersey eight to seven. So a couple of good battles already early this morning, hoping for another one here now. Well, they're definitely warmed up, that's for sure. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's what club season's all about at this point of the year. And like we said, the culmination of this summer season, these athletes that's selected from their regions throughout the country. So you know it's the best of the best. Yes, absolutely. And, and uh, when we get an opportunity, we can talk about that selection process because it's very unique from every other type of event like this. We have a whistle here, and Riley Vasile will take it out there on the fan and get things going once again, playing USA lacrosse rules here in Delaware today. Maybe but Kevin I don't know. Sorry, different from college. They're... Good feed inside by Kevin Aw. In there to Caroline Hoskins, and it's Maryland on the board first. That was a great draw and dump right there. Kevin Aw made a nice feed. She got through the double team. Hoskins slid in wide open right in front of the cage, and she buried it. Caroline Hoskins from the Skywalkers program, club team in Maryland. Maeve Kavanaugh from Central Middle School as well. You'll see right here, there's the drive to the cage. Here comes the double. They spread it out. She pops out, frees her hands, and then just dumps it into the middle. Give Kavanaugh nice an finish. assist for that. Nice little yeah, find and finish there, Tracy. Yeah, it was just a nice patient play. You know, you drive, you pull out, the defense frees your hands and then you see who's open in front of you. 
Another draw for Maryland now taking it quickly in transition. It's Vasile. She's got an open lane looking to dish it off. A good recovery there by the Long Island Black defense. Was it was an illegal check, according to the official. <laughs> <laughs> well but said. Yeah, yeah, we have to retract on those, you know. It's not college rules for sure. Here's the free position. Vasile winds up, gets ready, and she will fire. Goes off the post. Hanky might have got a stick on that as well. Yeah, I think it hit off the top of the stick, hit the pipe, and popped back out. Here's Kavanaugh once again, bouncing it back out to Finley Jackson. Peyton Magday. Weaving her way inside as Kavanaugh, and weaving her way back outside as Kavanaugh. The Kavanaugh likes to take control of the offense. She's got good stick work. Here's Webster. Aria Webster inside. The shot and the score. It's Magday. Peyton Magday, Ridgely Middle School in Maryland. Her first of the game. It's 2 to nothing. Team Maryland 2025. When you watch this play, it's very similar to the play that just happened prior. So here's the drive to the cage, the double, and then just the slide in between the top of the defense and the bottom defense. They're going to have to close that gap can't leave that area in front of the goalie that wide open. By the time the low defenders go to crash on that, it's already in the net. Another nice catch and finish. That time by Peyton Magday plays for the M&D Club lacrosse team. The, fit, the find there by Aria Webster from Brambleton Middle School. Yeah, you know, when you say those names, Skywalkers, M&D, Hira, you know, you're talking about the best of the best that Maryland has to offer. Our first look here at Long Island Black on offense, Tracy, and our first look here at this squad, what, what what will we expect here from this team, a team you've seen pretty closely over the last few days? Well, what I would really hope at this point is that Long Island is able to uh, just hang in there and be competitive. You cannot play from behind this whole game. So you're going to be patient. Like I was saying before, these are not college rules, so there is no shot clock. So you can really give your defense a little bit of a breather right now, a little bit of a chance. Uh, to collect themselves and figure out what's going on on that end while the offense burns some clock and tries to cut the deficit to one. Both these teams emerging from pool play, advanced in the bracket, in the quarters and semis, and getting a score and getting one back is Long Island Black here early on. It looked like in the middle there, Jamie Elliott. Yeah, I believe it was Jamie Elliott with the goal there. And, and that was a tough, she had a fade shot there. I was surprised, you know, I, I, I kind of cringed for a minute when she went to take it, but I guess it was perfectly placed. Let's see right here. Hands are free, quick shot. The goalie might've been screened by the double team as well. Yeah, it looks so like, right here. Yeah, it looked like pretty good defense there by Mackenzie Brown and Elliot, pretty crafty there with the stick to sort of work that around there on the inside. Good finish. Yeah, it was a good finish. As soon as her hands are free, well, on that one, she didn't hesitate. So if you're watching this game to learn how to play it a little bit, if she takes that ball and hesitates with that, she's going to get a, a sharp double team on her. I mean, and might not have been able to even get a shot off. Delaney Chernoff with the assist there, a yellow jacket to yellow jacket connection. You see that a few times here for Long Island Black today. But once again, <laughs> here's Maryland in their offensive end. They've won three of the four draws so far. That's going to be a big determining factor. They will work it out and settle into their offense. Yeah, the defense needs to stop here for their confidence. You know, Maryland so far has gone on offense twice and has scored twice. So I think it's important that the defense gets a stop here. That ball pops on through, recovered there by Leah Miller. These are high school freshmen coming up this fall, the class of 2025. So getting some competition here early on for these to be high schoolers down the road. Yeah, they sure don't play like it, though, I'll tell you that. <laughs> we got obstruction of shooting space on this one, so it's going to be another free position. And again, Maryland being able to dump the ball into the heart of the 8-meter of Long Island. That's not going to be good. Off and running is Marley O'Day. She goes in and pops up and over the cage. Annie Minoglio tried to get a stick on it under behind the cage, and she does. Nice recovery there. Long Island dodged a bullet on that one with the shot going over the top of the net, but allowing Maryland to get that second chance rebound. They're going to get another eight meter right here again for obstruction of shooting space. You saw the attacker uh, go to 
fake pump like she was going to take a shot. The defender slid in her way, and that's why she gets the 8 meter. Good awareness there by Miller, who now goes in and goes 5-hole for the score. 3-1, to one, Team Maryland. So Leah Mill is real patient on this. Gets it. She gets a great angle. Quick first step. And you'll see right here, you know, she just goes right untouched. Basically, there's no white shirt around her anywhere. So it's, it's attacker versus goalie. Just doesn't close the legs quick enough. Goes, you're exactly right, right through the five hole on the bounce shot. Leah Miller plays for Heroes Club program and head coach of Team Maryland today is Tierney Ahern, who is the club coach of Heroes. A really good program in Maryland. One of the strongest that they have. Matt Maloney on the other sideline for Team Long Island Black. Another draw for Maryland, and this time they get it in transition, looking to add to this 3-1 to one lead. It's Vasile. Winning those draw controls is, is one of the most telling statistics in the sport of women's lacrosse. And you see it's leading to free position upon free position upon free position. I was just going to say, and Maryland, that, that's a site of awareness there, doing a good job of drawing these shooting space fouls, even in the transition game. That one off the post once again. Getting into the run out, though, is Caroline Hoskins. So a lucky break hitting the pipe, but again, it goes right back to the Maryland offense. They seem to be getting all of those 50-50 balls so far, draw controls included. Correct, and, and again, looking from a, a coach's perspective, that's what you preach as a coach. We have to win the 50-50 ground balls in the draws if we want an opportunity to win a lacrosse game. Here's Lily Peak on the inside, the first save of the day for Brianna Henke. And she would have got a flag on that had she not taken that shot. So that's a lucky break there for Long Island. It's a great save. Let's see if they can turn that into a goal scoring opportunity. We're about 10 minutes into the action here at DE Turf Sports Complex in Milford, Delaware. Alongside Tracy Wiener, I am Tom Eschen on the call for these American Tom. Select Lacrosse Championships. So Tom, just so you know as well, this is also running time, so the clock doesn't stop. So these are true just 25 minute run and guns. So you can't fall too far behind. Yeah, no, things will move quickly. These games <laughs> running right around about an hour total here over total. the course of this tournament. So Correct. things happen fast. They do. And these kids are, you know, granted, I'm sure they're exhausted. It's probably close to 85, 90 degrees again today. It's been hot all week. And they've been playing literally nonstop since their high school seasons and the club season in June and July. Every weekend, we have been very busy this year. Thank goodness. <laughs> right, as opposed <laughs> to last year where it was a little bit more sporadic in terms of when and where these tournaments took place. And, of course, not as many teams could travel like we saw this time around in 2021. Correct. Michaela Gillis inside. Good dish to Abigail Galeris. Her shot goes wide, but it is backed up by Long Island Black. And that was a nice shot. Hands were free, let the ball go, similar to how they scored the first time. Laney Chernoff looking inside the pass to Reese King, who scores. Three to two. Uh, Chernoff is just having herself a day. She was the one that scored the go-ahead goal uh, to help them win the uh, semifinal game. And now she has two assists. Reese King buries that shot. Big target. Um, great hands. And, and that, again, is a textbook type of women's across play. You see, right? Pass goes one pass. And there's the there's the front door cut right there. And and Chernoff does not hesitate at all. Okay, so she sees King make that cut, fronts her defender, and bam, before you know it, it's in the net. Yeah, and that angle was decreasing for King as she got closer and closer to goal line extended. So a nice finish there as well under some tough circumstances. Nice job. Correct. Let's see now if they can follow that up by winning a draw. Three to two, <laughs> Maryland jumped out to the early lead. Long Island Blacks trying to dig themselves back in here. They are. I can see the sideline. Look at that's all the directors there and everybody running it. They're all intense on the sideline right there. But here we go. Now Maryland again wins. What is that, Tom? The fourth of, of the five draws four, today? Four of the five so far. Fifth, fifth the sixth. Excuse fifth. us. Yes. Oh, wow. That's going to come back to be, uh, you know, moving forward. That's something that must, must, um, adjustment must be made on that. And another shooting space drawn here for Maryland. It'll be Lily Peak taking it here on the eight meter. 
Yeah, Maryland's just a step faster right now than Long Island. That's why they're getting all those shooting space because the defense is not setting up in time. And here comes Peak streaking to the cage and scoring. It's four to two. You know, what a, uh, you know, here you are. That's why I always say it's hard to get behind in a game. You are scratching and clawing your way just to stay a goal behind or two goals behind. And then you're going to give up one 10 seconds after you go go behind. You know, Long Island's gonna, just going to have to tighten up a little bit on that. And um, there was good defense on it. She just made a great placement of that shot. And you'll see it just goes, if you're staring at the goalie, it's the left-hand upper corner. Almost had it, you know. I think that Henke was right there, just didn't miss it by, like, a, a fraction. Peak from St. Paul's School in Maryland. Part of the Skywalkers club team. Another key draw here. Bodies go down, and it looks like Black will get it, but we do have a Maryland player down, so a whistle drawn there. Yeah, um, I think the two Maryland players actually collided going for the ball, so... Kate Wilking and Sophia Herrera, and Wilking will go step off for a few moments. I think she just got her goggles knocked off right there. You see yeah. her own her own mate tried to stop herself, but she might have knocked the wind out of her just a little bit too. Yep, yeah, the stick was pretty high as well. Friendly friendly fire there. So it will stay. A little friendly fire. We'll, we'll stay Long Island Black possession. So important draw control for them here. This is a very important draw control, no doubt. Again, you don't want to fall three, four, five goals behind because it's going to take all your energy just to try to tie up the game. And then you kind of have nothing left to push well, forward. Well, they came back as well, this Long Island Black team, in the semifinal, right, Tracy? They were down, you know, for, yeah. sporadically throughout the, the day earlier, you know, in the first game of the day for them. That's correct. They were down by two, three goals the whole time. And then all of a sudden it was a tie game. And then in the last two minutes they had possession and churn off Barry to shot. So maybe this is right, they've got Maryland right where they want them. <laughs> but yeah, exactly. The heart, the heart attack team, right? Is that what they call it? <laughs> that, I'm not sure Matt Maloney <laughs> likes that too much, but we'll see how they can no. work on things here in the first half. But Matt is the most mellow of all of our coaches. That I will tell you. <laughs> he is definitely, uh, from hanging out with him the last few weeks, he is, is just relaxed, you know. Hmm. We're all at the table yelling, screaming, joking around, and Matt's just relaxed, laughing it off. <laughs> Brief whistle there, Kyle Fennell. Working it around. There's Chernoff, two assists already today. Once again, feeding on the inside. It's King. And looked like that stick was too close inside that sphere of the head, so they'll get it now on the eight-meter arc for Reese King. already one goal today this is a big shot for her to bury king bounces it in for her second of the day long island black cuts the lead four to three now here in milford delaware one more look at this one tracy and you'll see it's an eight meter she's got a great angle gets in quick first step keeps the stick from an uncheckable position and bounces it by the goalie 9.38 to go here in the first half between Team Maryland 2025 and Team Long Island Black 2025 on LAX Sports Network alongside Tracy Wiener. I am Tom Eschen here at the American Select Lacrosse Championships in Milford, Delaware. Long Island Black just scoring a moment ago to make it 4-3, to three. so things tightening up a bit for the final 10 minutes of this first half. Again, it's going to come down to the draw for Long Island, and this is an, another one that, you know, there we go. I thought Maryland was going to come up with that. The ball bounces Long Island's way. Yeah, Emma Browns did a nice job on the circle. That's the third draw control today for Long Island Black. And they start to get a little bit more momentum here. So you got the TV timeout right after the goal. Now they get possession right back once again. Yeah, and they're being very patient on offense. I like that. You know, definitely everybody's getting a touch the ball. Everybody's getting into the game. I mean, it is a, a two 25-minute halves. Like we were saying, the rules don't go like college. They will be running time. But still, you know, 50 minutes is, is you, no need to rush anything. And Long Island Black looking to settle into their offense. Chernoff continuing to survey. She's got two assists, two goals for Reese King today. Jamie Elliott has the other one. 
and this is, you know, for, for Long Island, I would think that their confidence right now also is, is doing a little bit better. You know, again. Another dish from Chernoff to King. That connection is working. A hat trick for King. Three assists for Chernoff. King is a big target for, for Chernoff. She's hitter. I mean, and Reese has been delivering, so why not keep doing what you're doing? You know, obviously, you know, there it is. You see the stick. She gets the stick up. It's not, you know, it's a tough angle, too. You see her drifting towards away from center. But still, as soon as she's open, sure enough, gets it around the stick. That's a great feed and a great finish. King from West Hampton Beach. You can see using her size effectively there inside you know, all, all day long here. Four to four, we're all tied up. Bell Smith territory there, West Hampton Beach. get going once again. That one right into the stick of Caroline Hoskins, who has scored a goal today for Maryland. So they get possession back after Long Island Black scored the last two. Well, their offense has been running so efficient. I mean, almost unstoppable. Once again, it gets inside. We have a whistle there. It looked like it came right before the shot. So Marley O'Day will get it on the eight meter arc. And that went in. So that's kind of a break almost for Long Island. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was thinking as well. So here's O'Day from the left side. She'll defer out. She had three or four of those white shirts around her, so they'll settle back in. Like Tracy had mentioned, no shot clock here. And it's very smart. You know, it's very... Uh... That's like a next level decision. Most kids, when they're on the eight meter, they think I'm going to goal, I'm going to goal, I'm going to goal. You recognize what you have and you don't have. You just dish it off and you don't lose possession that way. Let's see what she does this time. O'Day once again here. This time she goes to goal, moves her stick around, flag was up, didn't matter. It's a goal for O'Day and Marilyn Reed takes the lead five to four. Well, O'Day took a lot of <laughs> hacks along the way on that one. I mean, again, the defense needs to, instead of going for those stick checks, just get your body there, you know, just shift and, and take away her open lane. But you'll see here, one stick check, two stick checks, three, you know, she was going to get the call. She was going to get the ball back anyway, had she not scored on that. Yeah, really good stick work and control. And you know, as she's going full speed there, Tracy, as well. I mean, she's, right? Correct. And, and that's what I say, when you say these kids have not played one minute <clears throat> excuse me, of high school ball yet. It doesn't look it. Their their skills are so next level. It's very impressive. So Maryland up five to four. Down comes the draw, bouncing in to the offensive zone for Maryland, and they will get it after the whistle. And that's a shame. Long Island actually had possession of that, but before the possession was awarded, one of the Long Island players came over the line, so they got a violation for uh, entering... What a feed by Kavanaugh inside to Hoskins. Maryland's got two in a row. It's six to four. Second goal for Hoskins. Second assist for Kavanaugh. Cannot take a breather once you tie the game up. There's still so much game to be played. So your Matt Maloney's out on the field on that one. I don't think he <laughs> liked the call. Originally. <laughs> but you see where they're scoring all their goals from, Tom. Like, it's everything's right in the middle of the eight meters. You see right there. They are just sliding through the, the gap that is between the eight meter and the down low defenders. And, and you cannot leave that area unattended. Yeah, and Maryland's been very aggressive off the draw as well. They look, they've been looking to score sort of immediately after getting it in transition. If they haven't, they've pulled it back out, but they've gotten some goals that way too. Correct, fast break, slow break into your offense. I mean, it's lacrosse 101. Less than five minutes to go here in the first half. Maryland, a six to four lead. Two straight game of runs. We had two by Long Island, two by Maryland. Now Long Island Black gets the ball back. The draw is the key. Always the key. I go Got back it. and forth with wishing and wishing Seven. that they would get rid of the draw and, and keeping it. <laughs> Maryland leading the draw control battle seven to four so far here. Mm. And now Long Island Black taking their time a little bit more than we've seen Maryland's side of things. And the connection between Chernoff, the King, is work. Let's see if they go to that again, looking inside to Gillis that time. Goes through to King.
Just churn off. Be some aggressive defense played here by very Mackenzie high. Brown. Correct. Very, very high defense. Try not to let Chernoff get comfortable. She's been very comfortable on that right side. Brown pushed her out a little bit farther that time. You'll see these teams, you know, they can they play both man to man and the zone. Sometimes they flex in and out of them just to see. King again. It's King again. Four for Reese King in this first half. It's six to five. They have no answer right now, the defense for Reese King. She's just crushing it. And what she does with her height and her size is she just fronts her defender. And once the defender's on her back and that stick is up in the air, she's such a large target. And then she just catches and releases immediately. Like there's no hesitation in Reese's game. Once right here, catch and release. And, and once again, it was churn off with the assist. So it's not a replay, folks. They've combined three times for goals so far here today. Yeah, it's, you know, uh, and, and, and keep at it until they figure out a way to stop it. We always say Why that. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. 100%, that is correct. <laughs> 2.30 to go here in the first half. Good battle, Long Island Black continuing to do sort of what they did in the semifinal. They get down a little bit, they come back. They get down a little bit, they come back. Plenty of time to go. They did. They got called for a violation on that draw, though, on the, on the push. So Maryland right away gets another draw possession. Another good look inside and trying to work her way inside was Sofia Herrera. She once again draws the shooting space, and she'll get it here on the right side of the arc. That's an awful lot of shooting space violations for one team in one half. Herrera works to the left, shoots to the right, and Maryland retakes their two-goal lead. First of the day for Her Herrera. She makes them pay. Those those eight meters, though, uh, you know, whatever's going on in that defensive end, I just feel like Maryland's offense is so fast that the defense is struggling to get p position on them. And even on the eight meters, you see right here, I mean, basically Herrera goes untouched. You know, yes. there's no pressure on her. There's nobody. I mean, it's like her first step was so quick. And then she, she faded to the left and shot low right side. Rare another St. Paul school product, M&D club. And six different goal scorers so far here for Maryland today. That's tough to defend as well. You know, who do you concentrate on? Who do you put your best defenders on? It's, it's very difficult when everybody can shoot and score. Magday's done a nice job on the circle. She once again picks up under one of those draw controls and gets it into the Maryland zone. Less than two minutes to go here in the first half. And, and Maryland can take their time on this because every penalty now in the, inside the two minutes is going to be a clock stoppage. And it looks like they'll do just that. When they haven't gotten it immediately without a whistle, they have pushed, but then they done a good job in their settled offense as well. We saw that early on. Niglio goes inside. She goes down, but we have a whistle there. A couple players went down, so she will get it here on the 8-meter arc. It continues. Yeah, you know, if we looked at how many 8-meters Maryland has had so far in this first half, the number would be close to double digits, I would think, at this point. Noglio goes inside, stopped by Hanke that time. Ball bouncing there in the critical scoring area, and it does go back the way of Black. That was a big stop there. That was a huge stop. And if, if I'm Long Island, what I try to do here now is hold on to the ball for the last shot in this half. It's okay to be down by two. You don't want to go down and give up two goals in the last minute of a game and be down four. You know, So you just want to make sure you go down either one down at this point or two goals down. Good ride here by Lily Peak in Maryland, though, making it... A little bit of a tough clear here for Long Island Black. See if they can do it. Round to Bright. Right, little spin move there in the middle, and she does succeed in getting it into the Long Island Black zone. Now a little bit unsettled here. Inside, shot bounces low, but goes in. Aubrey Moore. They cut it to one. That's just a, a you know, I tell you, I was, I was getting a little nervous watching them try to clear the ball. I thought Maryland's ride was unbelievable, and I thought it was taking them an extraordinary amount of time. But once they got into free space, you see right here, Long Island just really starts to <clears throat> to open it up. Rob does a great job, you know, getting it inside. And the finish was just, and, and again, that's not an easy play. You know, Mora does a nice job in traffic of getting a good shot off. 
you see the ride and you saw Long Island Black make Maryland pay for that. That's something we saw in the NCAA tournament this past year, Tracy, with uh, Syracuse Northwestern quite a bit. Early on, that helped Syracuse get off to an early lead. You saw Long Island Black initially struggle, and then they found the opening. Absolutely. 41.9 left here in the first. Yep. And the draw is just so important. It just creates so much opportunity, so much more touches, possessions, and, op you know, it's just one of, like I said, the most telling stats of a game. Very rarely will you see a lacrosse game where a team that did not have draw control stat win. And a big momentum shifter as well. Yeah, let's see if they can hold them, though, to not scoring. And that would also be you know, great way to go into the, the halftime. Here's Mag Day. She has a goal today. 10 on the clock. Mag Day surveying over the middle. Seven on the clock. Five, it's Mag Day looking to catch. And Long Island Black, the defense holds firm as time expires here in the first half. An excited Long Island Black sideline as they trail by just one, Tracy, here. Seven to six, good battle up and down all day long. It's exactly what Long Island was hoping for. Again, the first time they played, it was a 14 to six game. They're a different team now. They've been gelling all, you know, 72 hours that they've been here and it's starting to show on the field. So we've got six different goal scorers for Maryland. Meanwhile, on the Long Island black side, we've got four goals for Reese King, four goals for Delaney Chernoff. 25 minutes in the books here in Delaware. Halftime coming your way next. Back live at DE Turf Sports Complex in Milford, Delaware. It's Team Maryland, the class of 2025, leading the Long Island Black 2025 girls. Seven to six after 25 minutes getting you set for the second half. But let's take a look here at some of the highlights from the first half. And we start with Team Maryland, who they've got six different goal scorers, three of those assisted, so the rest coming on draw controls. They've sort of taken advantage of these unsettled situations all day long. Well, they absolutely have, and what they do is they're, they're picking apart the middle of the eight meter, so they're so smart about it. Moving the ball, moving the ball, and then when the, when the Maryland player's driving, the Long Island kids are late filling in the lanes, and look at all the eight meters that they're getting, and then they're burying them. And those are some tough shots. I mean, you know, the defense is doing what they can, trying to be legal about it, but look how fast Maryland's offense is. Just get in there, that first quick step, there's no defending that at all. Two goals for Caroline Hoskins, two assists for Maeve Kevinaugh. As for Long Island Black, we've got quite the show being put on by Delaney Chernoff and Reese King. King with four goals, Chernoff with four assists, three of those going to King. Well, for whatever reason, you know, King has just decided that she has the good matchup against her player. And every time she fronts her and gets that great position right there, you see her slip right in. And, and Delaney hasn't missed her stick, not one time. Those passes couldn't have been any better. They're just on fire, the two of them right now. I wouldn't change a thing when it comes to the Long Island offense. Don't forget, these are high school freshmen upcoming here this fall playing here today in the American Select Lacrosse Championships. And a champion will be crowned here in the class of 2025. In just a short while, we'll get you back out for the second half in just a moment here on LAC Sports Network.
Second half about to get underway here in Milford, Delaware at the American Select Lacrosse Championships alongside Tracy Wiener. I am Tom Eschen. It's seven to six Maryland with a first half lead here, Tracy. And of course, this the culmination of the summer season. These teams have competed for three days to crown a champion in their respective age group. And we'll have them for you here all day long. Four championship games starting here with the class of 2025. And, and this has been just a great game. I mean, you couldn't have asked for a better championship game. I, I feel like, you know, everybody is has all gelled. These teams are, you know, now comfortable with each other. Uh, these are clearly not, you know, uh, your pre-selected club teams like National is, where you just enter your team. These are, are kids that tried out. They had a few practices. We do have the goalie change in the second half here uh, for Team Long Island. So we're looking at Maya Suskin now going in. And, uh, <clears throat> and and so for these girls, I mean, this is, for some of the teams, it just takes them a little longer to gel. And it looks like everybody right here in the championship on their A game. Rebecca Mullinix coming in to start the second half for Maryland. So a couple new goalies, and let's see if that changes anything as both offenses were pretty efficient, with, you know, when they were able to get these shots on cage in the first half. See if that continues in the second. Draw controls went the way of Maryland in the first. Let's see where it goes in the second. Once again, it's Maryland picking it up. And once again, it's Kate Wilking grabbing that draw. Yeah, I'm curious to see if uh, Matt Maloney makes any changes on the defensive end in terms of his uh, formation. Saw Maryland in the first half draw. Eight meter after eight meter, a lot of free positions on a lot of shooting space violations, and they were able to get a few of their goals that way. Here in a little more of a settled situation with Lily Peak looking over the middle. A lot of bodies in there, but somehow found its way to Karis Volley, who scores. I don't even know, you know, how she saw the stick. That pass was just as impressive as the shot, I have to be honest. When you look at it, I mean, Surrounded, like you said, by defenders, and and just over the top through everybody, thread the needle. Lily Peak, like you said, Tracy, threading that needle, getting it inside to Volley, the Glenwood Middle School heroes lacrosse product. Yes, you know, and defenders were in the right spot. You saw Emma Brown was just looking, saying, "Wow, what what else can we do?" You know, we were right there. Right, <laughs> like I said, there was defenders draped all over Volley and. Give her some credit, she caught and finished. Eight to six, Maryland here. Catherine Rathjen, now work it behind the cage. Long Island Black with Kyle Fennell. Fennell looking into the middle, good catch and a save there by Rebecca Mullenix. That's the play that's been working the whole time. Mullenix made a real nice save on that. So Molinix getting tested as soon as she gets in and passing her first test. Black so retaining possession. Difficult to be the second half goalie, right? <laughs> <laughs> the pressure's on. Vanell, little bump inside, and once again, it looked like Molinix got a stick on it. Battle for the yeah, run out. Su Surprised there was no charge call on that. Rathjen did win the race there, so possession continues here for Long Island Black. Long possession at that. Now inside, good catch there by Toner. Toner though, stop. Molinix comes in, three straight saves. How about that? Wow, that's impressive. Those were three quality shots too. I mean, you expect at least score on one of them. And Maryland retakes possession in eight to six lead. Two has been the biggest lead of the day, I believe thus far. Correct. You know, it's, it's interesting, Tom, you look at <clears throat> those saves by Mullinex coming in cold off the bench, and, and there's an athlete who's not even played one minute of high school lacrosse. How impressive is that? Feeling already like she's ready for the big moment, kind of cool to see. Right? See a whistle there on the clear opportunity, and it'll be Black regaining their momentum and possession here. Maryland's ride is impressive as well. You just see the girls flying all over the field, you know, doing everything that they can to stop the ball. And they cause turnovers. They cause so much chaos and confusion. 
they have tried to play at a pretty fast pace pretty much all day long here. Long Island Black and choosing to settle things down a bit more on their end. When they've been in settled situations, they've gotten good looks. Uh, big thanks to here, Delaney Chernoff, 47 and white. That one going up and over the stick of Fennell. And through here to Maryland. You know, of all the times that I thought Long Island would be impatient, that was not one of them. You, know, you just made a great stop on the defensive end. You got a hot goalie. You really needed to, to take a high percentage shot there. Brera goes in, comes back out. One woman clear that time. Maeve Kevinaw taking it all the way herself into the Maryland offensive zone. Nice job in an unsettled situation. Here's Peek. Peeking inside, inside again to Herrera. That bounces up and over. That is a shot, so it will go the way of Maryland. Aria Webster here. It was a nice play. Great ball movement by Maryland on that. Peak. Get call for a block. So she's going to get an eight meter. He's a goal and an assist today. Had that assist a few moments ago where she threaded the needle. She'll get a little bit closer to the center of that eight meter arc. Dosi Do going on between Long Island Black as Peak goes in and scores. Second of the day for Lily Peak. It's a three goal lead. Very, very similar to her first goal. Ends up on the turf. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but she's so fast, you know. And again, there's different ways to get to the cage on an eight meter, but Peak goes all the way. And on that one, she actually might have went through the crease on that. I'm a little surprised that. I think that's why she fell to try to lean herself out to the right of it so that she didn't fall into the crease. A pretty good awareness there around the cage to avoid that, avoid that call. You know, you're going full speed and you, you have to stop on a dime. And then you just saw her shift her weight to the, to the other foot and kind of like fall out away from uh, the goal crease. Five minutes into this second half, Maryland with the advantage. They have a, they had a 7-6 advantage at halftime. And it looked like a false start there on the black side of things. Excuse me, on the Maryland side of things. So it will be Long Island black ball. Well, they need a goal here. They do not want to go down any more than three in a in the second half here. They you know, they've worked so hard. Haven't scored yet here in the second half. Here's Bright, three red shirts around her. She comes back out, Chernoff. Chernoff working here along her right side. Orzaleri looking into the middle. That one intercepted by Molinix. What a few minutes she's played since checking in. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Good catch there by Mackenzie Brown and she'll take it in the clearing game. Here comes Maryland the other way. Can they get anything going in transition or will they choose to settle it down? They will work through Peak once again. Peak over the middle. Good catch. And Vasile is just a little wide. Maryland's starting to turn it on now. Long Island needs a big time stop here. Or this game's gonna, you know, get get away from them real quick. Yeah, Molinix has been a star in goal. Correct. Has, has stopped Black from doing anything here in this second half. Mag Day. See that stick too close to the sphere around the head, a safety call, and now it'll be Mag Day to take over here on the arc. Yeah, just giving up way too many eight meters, and Maryland's just so good at them. Magday had a goal in the first half, looking for one here. Saved by Soskin. Bounces out to Hoskins. Those those balls going Maryland's way. It feels like all day long, really. They've got a lot of 50-50s. Yeah, second, third chance opportunities. It's peak over the middle. Good feed inside. It bounces wide off the, through the stick of Hoskins. She had the shot, excuse me. Yeah, Soskin's doing a nice job also for Long Island, but uh, she's just getting like double the amount of shots. There's a shot and score. Vasile, her first of the day. Maryland continuing to spread it around and actually spreading this lead out as well. It's a four goal game. Yeah, Vasile takes that lefty and buries that shot. That was a, you know, that was a great shot. 
you'll see right here, she just kind of picks up the ball as she's falling to the ground. Oh, just what sidewinds that. Nice little hitch there, and she got a lot on that shot. She shot she that sure hard. Did. She sure did. She had a lot of pace on it. I mean, that was like a warm-up shot, you know? <laughs> <laughs> She saw the, the view and it looked good to her. So another goal for another Maryland player. They've now got eight different goal scorers here today. They've really spread it around. And again, that's an impressive stat because when you think about it as you're trying to figure out who you want to mark the different matchups, if everybody has just scored one, there's not much for you to match up. It's the draws that are killing Long Island today. Yeah, Vasile just scored the goals and just picked up a draw. He's been really good in the circle. Yeah, Maryland's starting to feel it now. So look at you just see the confidence in the way they play. They're clicking. It's Kavanaugh in, out. Mag Day into the middle. And that one into the stick of Soskin. So a stop there for Long Island Black and Soskin, who's done a pretty good job herself here. She's made a couple saves. She has. That was a tough play. You know, uh, Mag Day did what she could. But by the time she caught that ball, she, and, uh, Sasuke went stick to stick on her. So there was nowhere else she could shoot, but right into the goalie stick. Here comes the clear for black, Amelia Bright. You see how fast though Vasily got right back on her. And the speed of Maryland is what's catching my eyes. So impressive. And they're so super aggressive. Every 50-50 ground ball, anytime the ball is on the turf, there's two or three Maryland girls pursuing it. Less than 15 minutes to go here in the second half. Class of 2025 championship here at the American Select Lacrosse. Out on the fan here is Black. Start there for King. Why second be a, half for Black so far? Yes, a rare eight meter for Long Island on the same call that they've been having all day, the obstruction of shooting space. But she's surrounded by red jerseys. See what she does. Four goals for King. She'll go to the cage, up and over it goes. They're going to have to take a, a very, very high percentage shot to beat Mullenix. She's just a very impressive goalie. My count, she's already made three saves here in <laughs> 10 minutes of play in this second half. Held Long Island scoreless. Or that one, Vasily once again got her stick on it. Hoskins tried to get inside there to pick it up, and the ball bouncing up, and we had a whistle there off the ball. In the middle of the chaos. Yeah, New York needs to, I should say, Long Island needs to score here to uh, to just stop the momentum that Maryland's got going on. But it is taking a lot of time. And again, it is running time. So, you know, you're down to, you know, 13 minutes left only in this game. And you're down by four. So you got to score here would be. <laughs> nice job in traffic to finish there. Michaela Gillis. So Long Island Black gets one back here. Maybe the comeback is on. It's gonna start with the next draw control. Gillis makes a nice play here under pressure. And again, this is the opposite of what was going on with Long Island. Long Island on this time had several opportunities to get to goal and finally broke three on that defense. But look, Gillis is surrounded by one, two, three, four, five Maryland shirts and still finds a way to bury that shot. Yeah, she went back against the grain there. Look at the spin move and she found a whole bunch of red. Got her hands free somehow. That was, what a goal. Yeah, and, and you're a Maryland defender and you say to yourself, I, I can't do any more than that, honestly. Cannot, cannot. Chernoff once again, the feeder there. Chernoff's got five assists here. And like you said, Tracy, this is a key draw control coming, especially for the black side, Long Island side. And we saw a couple players go down. The ball still... Bouncing around there. And the you know, whistle Long goes the way Maryland. That, they lost it. Yeah, they had possession, and then they lost the possession. Um, that would have been a, a huge draw win for them. Liam Miller on the right side. Looking over the middle, finding Webster. Excuse me, Wilking. That ball inside the area. Soskin tries to go to Hustle to pick it up, and the Hustle rewarded here with possession. 
All right, let's make sure though her clear goes good because now you got nobody in the cage. <laughs> That's a great play though. You know, you love to see an aggressive goalie. Uh, college coaches love it. And this week alone, I mean, I must have seen 150 of my college coaching <laughs> uh, <laughs> friends. All you know, it was great to catch up with everybody and just see them all here again. Uh, all summer long, the college coaches have been out in full force, and it's been great to see everybody. Good job here on the clear by Long Island Black. Abigail Galeris getting it over the middle, and they succeed there. A stop and a clear after losing the draw control. So now down three, approaching the 10-minute mark. Here's big Chernoff. possession, Long Island. Big, big possession. I mean, they all are at this point, but some more than others. Ball in the stick of Chernoff. That's where they've had the most success. She's assisted five of the seven goals today. Maryland brings an extra slide, and look at that. The defense by Mackenzie Brown pushing Chernoff all the way out, almost to that restraining line. I think Maloney called a timeout because yeah. he thought she was in trouble. Yeah, timeout there by Matt Maloney, the head coach of Long Island Black, and that also gives us a chance to step aside. 10-7, to 7, Maryland leading Long Island Black here in the class of 2025 championships here in Milford, Delaware. Back live here at DE Turf Sports Complex in Milford, Delaware. Tracy Wiener and Tom Eschen on the call here on LAC Sports Network. Thanks so much for joining us for game one of four we have for you here today. This is the class of 2020, 2025 championship. 2024 after this, 23 and 22 all coming your way all day long. So don't change the channel here on LAC Sports Network today. This team selected via regional tryouts, Tracy and Really a, a, a cool mix of players, and it's been really all combining into some great matchups here. Well, it has been. It's very, been very, very competitive for all three days, and and these uh, championship games are, are so not predetermined almost for the first time in, in tournaments like this. You know, you can usually figure out who's going to make it. We had no clue this year. 17 different regions in North America competing to get to this spot. So athletes from all around the country here coming to Delaware this weekend. It was so fun to see everybody and everybody's in all their gear, you know, representing their their states. And it was just uh, it was just such a great experience. It just went from field to field and watched everybody play and how the kids all got along. They're all in their little cheers and chants. And it was it was so much fun. It all culminates in a championship for each age group here today, which is kind of cool as well. Good defense applied by Maryland. A good pickup, though, there as well by Reese King. Here's Fennell. Trying to work her way inside. Maryland played some good defense here over the last two minutes. Even they had the, they forced the timeout right before that break, and now Long Island Black still struggling to, to find any space. Exactly, and, and very fortunate that there is no shot clock. That look inside, turn off to King. It's stopped again by Molinix. Unbelievable. I, I mean, she's super aggressive. You see how now Molinix comes like right to the top of the goalie area to make that save and just stuffs her. She's been the most valuable player on the field this second half. And struggling though, turnover in the clear. It's King who picks it off. King coming in to score. Two goal game, fifth of the day for Reese King. Huge swing of momentum there. And it's exactly what Long Island needed. You know, you go from Oh, what a great save by the goalie to, all right, we're only down by two. Amazing, in, in 10 seconds. Yeah, we haven't seen a lot of riding by Long Island Black here, but maybe Matt Maloney in that timeout said, hey, we gotta pick up the pace a little bit here, and it, it's working. Well, you'll see right here, Mullenix clearly wasn't comfortable holding the ball, and Reese knew it, so what she did was she slid over to the, the adjacent defender knowing that Mullenix was going to try to dish the ball to her. That was great um, understanding of what was going on in the field at that point, anticipation. So two straight goals here for Long Island. That's King's first of the second half after four in the first half. Less than eight minutes to go. The lead down to two. And look at this, Long Island Black getting the draw control after the whistle. The, <laughs> the Cinderella team, come on, guys. <laughs> 
They did so this in the funny. semifinal. They came back uh. time after time, and can they do it today? They were facing a 10-6 deficit here in the second half. It's 10 to eight now. And still plenty of time left. Clock will run until two minutes, and that'll stop on the whistle after that. Galaris, excuse me, in the inside. We're at Jen. Molinix. And I believe they said that the Galaris, Rathgen, excuse me, went into the crease. So ball goes back the way of Maryland. Ah, nice break there for Maryland. Good defense. Now Long Island needs another turnover quick. Looked like Molinix was aggressive once again there and coming out. And like we said before, Long Island Black riding a little bit more. Trying to provide some resistance. There was some, and I think they're going to call that a block as Maeve Kavanaugh is trying to work the clearing game for Maryland. And Kavanaugh came all the way down from the offensive end to help out on that one. You know, and again, that's just understanding the game. Your defenders are tired. They've been playing a lot of defense. So you're going to come down and help with the clear. No shot clock here, don't forget. So we'll see what Maryland does, if they'll still be aggressive or take some time. If it was Tracy coaching, we'd be pulled out right now, running some time off the clock. <laughs> <laughs> and that does come back to haunt Maryland. A turnover there in the middle. Looked like Lucy Livingston got her stick on it. Long pass for Soskin, and they're going to work and look to get something in transition here with Bright. There's Jamie Elliott, King, Rathjen. And they're gonna call shooting space there while King had the ball. So it'll be an eight and meter. Textbook fast break run right there by Long Island. And again, when you expect Maryland, you know, they're an aggressive team and we've been complimenting it. Yes, but, but the defense swarms there. Mackenzie Brown, I think, got her stick on that. Absolutely. And now I, I wouldn't be surprised if Maryland pulls it out. CLA, though, in transition for a moment being aggressive. O'Day thwarted there defensively by Peyton Phillips. And they stay aggressive and score. A big one for Maryland on the inside. Well, that was a, uh, a great ball movement, though. If you watch the ball movement on that, it moved much faster than the defense was shifting, and that gave Hoskins an, the ability to score an easy goal. Hat trick for Hoskins today. A big one for Maryland as well, trying to get some of that momentum back and salt this one away. Absolutely. And you see right here, one touch, two touch, you know, the drive and the backdoor cut. Boy, that was – Hoskins saw that. That was great. She just slid right behind Livingston on that one. Yeah, we've talked a lot about Delaney Chernoff for the Long Island Black team and her vision. Lily Peak has thrown a couple of nice passes there in the middle that Maryland's been able to finish off. A couple assists today for Peak. She's also got a couple goals. A three goal game. It, it's been great um, dis distribution on the Maryland side. So many players have touched the ball, so many players have scored, so many players on the assists. It's just been a complete team effort. Four minutes to go here in this second half. Game one of four here today. This is the class of 2025 championship. As someone in a bright green shirt does some jumping jacks behind our field here. <laughs> <laughs> That's about as distracting as you can get. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but Team Black, Team Long Island get, does have the ball here. Important possession. inside there by Elliott. She gets fouled as she went to pass. Give it to her, I think, on the fan. Yes, they do do that. Yeah, it's not going to be an 8-meter, but again, she was kind of fading away and then tried to dump it into the middle, so she was kind of lucky she got fouled on that one because I think it would have gotten picked off. Looking inside, and we got another foul there. Michaela Gillis drawing it. Yep, she got pushed from behind. Gillis does have a goal here today. So they're, they're under three minutes at this point. Three minutes to get three goals, so this is big right here. Yeah, this goes in. The flag goes up and we'll redo it. Time winding down. Molinix has been outstanding in the cage here in the second half. She's allowed just two goals.
That shot once again deflected by the stick of Mullenix. Chaos in front and a whistle as well. I think that Long Island needs to have a little more sense of urgency while they're, they're not maybe realizing that they're heading, you know, into some time, you know, worry territory. Precious seconds ticking off the clock. That shot wide by Elliott. Fight for the ground ball, and the whistle once again stays here. So at least Long Island Black is keeping possession at this point, but like I said, we're approaching two minutes. Two minutes on the clock. So on the whistle, the clock will stop. They try to get it in there to King. Or Zaleri. Looking into the middle. And we do have a whistle. So the, as you can see, the clock stops here at 147. And here comes oh, a free need? position for Vorzaleri. Because not only do they they need to score, but they need to score three goals. You know, it's not where... It's got to be make it, take it at this point. Vorzaleri yeah. inside. Defense swarms. Mackenzie Brown, excuse me, once again, it was getting her stick in there. Mackenzie Brown's been all over the field today. Another free position for Black. Maryland Mullen defense has held tight so far here. Mullenix looks like she's like in her junior year of high school. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I look, she's so impressive. Yeah, I think the coaches have an eye on her. Especially, <laughs> she's also delivered, Tracy. She's played really well. Absolutely. Borzaleri once again gets it taken away. Brown just so feisty getting her stick in there. She's really caused a lot of havoc on these free positions. She's so fast. Yes, but the stick broke on the shot on the... The check is so the, the stick st broke. Stick breaks here for Borzaleri. That's an attacker nightmare right there. Wow. Losing your stick. Let's see what happened. Right there. Oh, the stick, the stick coming yep. in from Wilkie. Yeah, the stick head. So that's not a penalty right there. It should be Maryland ball. It was stick to stick. Absolutely. And it looks like we're going to have uh, the officials talk things over. And like you said, good call there, Tracy. It will be Maryland possessed. So what a great defensive stand there by Maryland. I mean, Long Island had the ball for about three minutes, two to three minutes. But the problem like. is that, you know, they really, when you have a goalie like Mullenix, it puts so much more pressure on the offense. And you start overthinking and you start, you know, not taking those shots like you did as soon as your hands were free in the first half. You know, you're thinking to yourself, okay, I have to take the perfect shot to beat this goalie because she's on fire. Good job here in transition. Great ball movement by Maryland. Hoskins, her fourth. Maryland, another step to the championship. I would say that that was the one that would definitely seal it at this point. Um, you know, everybody was kind of open on that one. The, as You see Long Island just trying to get back into the defensive end. I think they just figured that Maryland was going to ride it out. And the next thing you know, it's everybody's just open. Assist there for Leah Miller. Hoskins, SBGS in Maryland, a Skywalkers club player as well. And four goals here today for Hoskins. The four goal lead as well. You can see some of the players here behind this turf field. Class of 2024 coming up next. The high school sophomores will play for their championship and you'll see it right here on LSN. Absolutely, that's gonna be another great competitive game. Here's more. Another whistle there. There will be a medal ceremony, so make sure to stay tuned for that. And then of course that 2024 game will start. I think it will let you know what time that game will be. Ball goes out of bounds, and the Maryland defender is closest to the end line, so. Lucy Buker back there. Maryland gets to keep the ball on that. From Mary of Nazareth, there in Maryland. Work it to Mullenix. And it looked like we have a crease. I think we got a crease violation there on Delaney Chernoff. Not often you see that on the ride. And yeah, I think she. That pass picked off by Elliott. And in the transition, the shooting space. So another chance for Long Island Black to get another goal. They've done a nice job in the second half on the ride.
Jamie Elliott has one goal today, looking for her second, and she gets it. 12 to 9, 43.7 on the clock. You know, there goes that, you know, coach's decision of if I'm Maryland and I had the ball with under two minutes up by three or four, just pull it out and end the game, you know. Why even give Long Island an opportunity to possibly have any hope to be in this game? You know, you only need to win by one. <laughs> <laughs> That's true at the end of the day. <laughs> you know, so what you always what you want to, you know, do is make sure that the other team never has an opportunity uh, to, to get back in. Yeah, let's see what game. see what uh, Long Island Black can do here. Forty three point seven on the clock. That twenty twenty four game scheduled still for eleven a.m. By the way, yes. so that will still go on as scheduled as of right now. So keep that in mind, so you won't have too much time in between games if you're looking to get some breakfast or something while you're waiting. Yep. The two Long Island kids just collided. Saw that. They're, they're hustling to the very end, Tracy, and that's that, Absolutely. that grit you see from Long Island. You know, they they don't, they never stop. Nope, they churn off and, and uh, Jamie Elliott just kind of, you know, going for the same thing and right there. Just kind of just don't see each other. They're looking at the ball and figuring out a way to try to. Yeah. Brings back some memories of playing football on a punt return and get one of those blindside blocks. <laughs> Correct. That's exactly what it looks like. Like when, welcome to the NFL. Right. <laughs> yeah. We've all been there. I've, I've been both on the receiving and the other end of that as well. Ne neither end feel that great, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, I would I not. Maryland looking to salt this one away. 18.5 on the clock. And we saw this from the beginning, Tracy. Aggressive, strong, and fast. It, it really a good, good group here for Maryland. Yeah, they were from jump. I mean, you know, Long Island really playing from behind the entire game, which you know is, is a recipe for, for not winning and, and not being successful. So, CLA was looking for one more, and we're going to get our first card of the game here with 8.5 on the clock. Yeah. It looks like Maryland is going to take home the class of 2025 title here at the American Select Lacrosse Championships in Delaware. Culmination of the club season. And Vasile, that's some good sportsmanship there. A, a subtle play by Vasile, but just sort of drop the ball and instead of trying to go to goal, it'll be... No, well, they called a violation on her. She left too soon, I think. I thought so, but you could be right. And if she did that, then that is exactly how it should be. The final seconds tick off the clock. The celebration underway for Team Maryland, the American Select Lacrosse 2025 champions. They take down the Long Island Black team 12 to nine and Maryland came out from the start, Tracy. They were aggressive both offensively and then really turned things up defensively in the second half thanks to their goalie, Rebecca Molinix too. Without a doubt. I mean, they dominated on the draw. I think that's the, the main thing. They never really gave Long Island an opportunity uh, on the draw control. So the possessions all went Maryland's way. Uh, they were a step faster. They were, you know, their shot percentage was, was much higher. They got, you know, uh, by their quickness and their ball movement, they were able to get so many more eight meters and just gave themselves every opportunity in every category to win this game. I thought that they were outstanding and super aggressive on the ride. Absolutely. Caroline Hoskins with four goals on the day. And we saw, I mean, she had four goals. We did see eight different goal scorers for this Maryland team. So they spread things around at the same time. And we now will get there in the moment we will have the ceremonies following this 2025 championship. 2024 is coming up at 11 a.m. Stay with us. That ceremony coming up next. Back live at DE Turf Sports Complex in Milford, Delaware. Tom Eschen and Tracy Wiener here. You can see the medal ceremonies taking place here. Team Maryland, the 2025 champions. Look at those faces, Tracy. <laughs> you know, the excitement, you gotta love it. They, they won something today. Well, and they worked hard for it. You know, it's been a whole summer of, of working hard. It's It's been trying out for this team, then practicing with your group, and then, you know, putting it together for 72 hours. So 
It's definitely not an easy task and something that they should absolutely be proud of. They really played well together, you know, and like you said, Tracy, these are these are girls from different club teams, different schools, you know, in their respective regions and, and being selected for this team and then playing and, and coming together quite quickly here. A very cohesive unit, I thought. I thought they did a great job. I thought they were super aggressive on the ride. I thought they were super aggressive in the fast break game. And the draw circle, the three young ladies on the draw circle just absolutely crushed it for them. Their head coach for this was Tierney Ahern, assisted by Brooke Shriver as well. So they also deserve plenty of credit for getting this group together. Absolutely. You know, and, and, and it's not an easy task to try to coach kids that you don't coach on a regular basis and turn them into a championship team. Like we said, they come from different clubs. Skywalkers, one of the club's heroes, M&D as well. Correct. Yeah, I mean, and, and they all know each other, you know. It's not like these girls don't know each other. They don't see each other all the time in the summer circuit. Um, the Maryland clubs play a lot together with each other. They do a lot of different play dates. Most of the events happen in, in Maryland. So they see each other on a regular basis. Here you see him getting a hat, a shirt, and engrave a cross ball as well. Yes. Nice swag, I believe they call it. That's what they call it. They call it swag. Then my friend there, Kristen Porcella, she was the uh, U19 coach several, several years ago. She played at Loyola University, runs uh, top of the Bay Sports. Porch, as we affectionately call her, <laughs> gets to give out all the awards. She's so lucky. It's fun for us, too. You know, when you see the kids so excited, when you see them so happy, when you see them so... Um, you know, the hats say, you know, that the, they're the 21 champions of the of the tournament and whatnot. You know, and you get a it's shirt. a nice way to end. And, oh, yeah, of course. You got a shirt and listen, a hat out of the deal. Listen, I mean, you can't on. be a champion without a shirt and a hat. <laughs> I mean, and they'll wear that all around Maryland. Every time Maryland <laughs> plays Long Island, they'll be wearing that. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, yeah, some, some bragging <laughs> rights here, Tracy. I know, you know, you're, of course, on Long Island as we speak. So, I mean... Uh, yeah. A little bit of bragging rights there between the two Without hot beds today. <laughs> I'll get a little uh, email from Tierney later saying, great, great, you know, thanks for having us at the event, Trace. <laughs> but, I mean, the girls are excited, and, you know, they're so talented. That's the one thing that, you know, I can say about all the girls here. They're, they have not played, look at how cute, not one minute of high school ball. Look at the smiles, look at the hard work. They know tomorrow they get to go to the beach. <laughs> You know, put your sticks down, girls, for like two weeks and go be, you know, 14 years old again. <laughs> right. Yeah, these are high school to be freshmen here and Correct. getting a, a much more full club season than they had, of course, last year. And hopefully being able to take advantage of that as they move into some of these probably will play for their varsity teams, of course, moving on up to high school on many occasions here. So the next big step that, for a lot yeah. of these athletes. Without a doubt. And it was exciting for them. You know, they got to see so many college coaches here this, this weekend, uh, this week. And they know that that's, you know, everybody's ultimate goal is to play at the next level. But, uh, and they got to actually see them. They were really, really excited. We did a, a showcase uh, on the Wednesday and they got to work with so many of the coaches. But the parents, you see them all on the, on the field. Wait, I want to get my picture with my kids, you know. You, so cute. You can see how ready we are for the next game. Class of 2024 coming up in moments. We'll take a quick break, get you to the draw control in just a few moments for Connecticut and Florida. That's coming up next.